Okay, well, we're going to carry forward with some of these litigation lectures, and uh, this one this time is about discovery, okay, and the importance of it, all right? Um, I've talked about this before, but in the old days, you know, there was what we called trial by ambush, and uh, so that has really gone by the wayside, and one of the real reasons for it is the concept of due process. Basically what we're looking for here is that everybody get a fair shake, at least get a fair trial. In the old days, you know, like in the Perry Mason days, somebody, I'm, that's like in 1955, you know, somebody shows up, sits in the back of the courtroom. Uh, I've told that story before, you know, where I had that happen to me one time where the actual uh, person that committed the crime was sitting in the back of the courtroom my client was falsely accused of the crime. So, um, you know, that doesn't happen though very often. That happened to me once in 30 years. Uh, so basically, what's discovery then? Well, discovery is uh, trying to level the uh, trial playing field uh, so that both sides know pretty much what the other side knows so they can make a better decision about whether a trial will be necessary or if it would be better to you know, settle the case in some way. So uh, these are important factors uh, in that process. Now one of the things I think that paralegals often do, uh, which is incorrect, is they file motions for certain things. Well, these are not, in the strictest sense of the word, uh, motions. A better word to use would be request for discovery uh, uh, or when you can even use subpoena if necessary uh, and sometimes you use both okay like in the area of uh, maybe a deposition you might uh, file a request for deposition set a date and so forth and then you would also include a subpoena that they bring all the records subpoena is under rule 45 uh, and a uh, request for deposition is in the uh, 20s, 30s, somewhere in there. In fact, what you're going to want to study um, is uh, rules 26 through 45, and that will give you a lot of good information. This is in the Rules of Civil Procedure uh, or the Indiana Trial Rules. It would be good to compare uh, both of these sets of rules, uh, so this would be both fed and state, okay? So look at those rules, kind of go over them. I think they would be helpful to a clear understanding. Now, uh, important things to consider also on that uh, are, uh, and this is some stuff that I've used before in legal research, but I think it applies equally here, and that is what we call the five W's and H, okay? And you know, like I said, I learned that in like fifth grade, but what you're, what you're really driving at is uh, you need a good solid set of, you know, facts, you know, and that's where the interview sheet comes in, that's where uh, trying to fill in the gaps is where we get into either legal research or discovery, okay? So uh, depending on what you want to call it. Uh, so you're going to like have the who, who is your client, you know, uh, you want to know who hurt them in a, in a car wreck, for example, or who owes them money, or who do they owe money, uh, you know, uh, there's where, you know, where did all this take place, is there a location for an accident, where does the plaintiff live, where does the defendant live, so there's a lot of different where's in there. Um, of course, you need a date, remember we talked about a date, that's important for statute limitations, it's also important in discovery to confirm the date. So in other words, your client is telling you a date. This happened on such such date. Well, what does the police report say? Okay. What does the other side say? This is a sign for defendant. What does the defendant say? Okay. So uh, match all that up. So you've got to go down through in your discovery and match up your five W's and H. Okay. How did it happen? Okay. Uh, you know, and get a version of the facts then, okay? So there's uh, there's different, uh, let me get where I can write a little bit. Versions of the facts, okay? 
uh, important, okay? They've got a version of why and how this happened, okay? Which brings me to why, okay? So that's important too. Uh, and, you know, they're going to try to, you know, shift blame, attach blame, uh, or whatever. And the question is going to be, what's the jury going to think? Is the jury going to think that the plaintiff makes more sense or that the defendant makes more sense? And that's where you've got to evaluate this in terms of the discovery. You know, what, what makes sense to you? I mean, you're not a lawyer, but you've got common sense. You've lived life for a while. So uh, you can just be a very good sounding board for your attorney in terms of trying to, you know, fill in, like, all the gaps. Well, in terms of instruments, then, like we were touching on earlier, as far as, you know, what kind of requests can we have, uh, basically, uh, important, you know, we, we've talked about depositions, okay, and we talk about that a lot, but really before you get into a request for depositions, you want to talk about interrogatories at the very least, okay, because you want to try to get a once over lightly in question form of what the different, uh, you know, occurrences are, what are the facts, where, when, why, how, all these kind of things. Now, important thing on this is some jurisdictions have reduced the uh, interrogatory limit to like 50, no more than 50. Now, you know, I had to live through a time when we were getting sets of interrogatories for parties to answer with 150 questions, you know. So that's uh, ridiculous, you know. It's like, where did you go to grade school? Uh, did you ever get divorced? You know, what's that got to do with this case? Absolutely nothing, you know. Uh, and so, you know, uh, you've got to try to line it up in terms of uh, keep that number down, 50 or less. Um, you'd be surprised, though, how they lead to one thing leads to another. So you start with 50, and next thing you know, it might swell up on you. So you've got to be careful on that, and don't let it uh, get out of hand, okay? Uh, there are other important things that you're going to want before you do that um, deposition. And that's the request for production, and that's to bring records uh, to your office. Well, this is where you can use the subpoena ducis tecum as well. And that's person or things. But ducis tecum means bring the documents, okay? So, uh, production of documents, doctor bills, pay records, uh, taxes, you know, a number of different things like that that can have a bearing on, on what you're driving. How, how would taxes come into play on this? Well, if you're trying to claim that you had lost wages, then you need to get the pay records and then you need to get the taxes. So you can show what you were paid last year, let's say you're paid 50000 and then this year, you had this accident, you're off work for like uh, six months, so you only got 25000 So you can recover that other 25000 in a car wreck uh, as a form of damages, along with the medical bills, along with the pain and suffering, okay? Now, there's one final one I want to put up on here, but I don't really like it very well, and that's request for admissions. Sometimes these are just inappropriate try to require somebody, you know, you're trying to trap them, say, to say, well, no, it's, yeah, the accident was all my fault. Uh, and, you know, um, I would object to those like in a tort case, like a car wreck or something, but they can be helpful. Uh, they come up all the time in foreclosures where you're uh, seeing someone's mortgage is behind in payments, uh, and you can just file request for admission to say, you know, is your mortgage behind, you know, uh, and, and that and they just have to say yes. I mean, there's no getting around it. So that really simplifies the case and can help you get to what we call summary judgment, which is a Rule 56 motion that can really help you. Well, my uh, advice to you would be to study those uh, rules of procedure that you had in uh, 103 Civil Procedure and then try to incorporate those. The other thing to always keep in the back of your mind is that, you know, these discovery documents that I just listed, you're going to need to do examples of those 
to put in your uh, basically trial notebook. So here again, if you want to work out a, a situation where you can partner up with one other person that you see and share some of these things back and forth, uh, because the next thing I'm going to ask you to do is answer. You know, just make up imaginary answers. So you're going to have the uh, blank request uh, for production, you know, bring forth all the medical records, so forth. Uh, and then you should have the finished request for production where please see attached pay records, medical bills, uh, you know, um, other kinds of, you know, therapy records, things like that, doctor reports, you know, all these type of things. Uh, a lot of times if you're sending requests for productions to a defendant, you may say, well, I want to see your uh, insurance policy on your car. So we can try to see just exactly how much car insurance. You might say any policy that could affect the outcome of this case. So basically, if you're looking, could be an umbrella policy. You might want to ask in an interrogatory, do you have you know, any other kinds of insurance other than your auto insurance, such as an umbrella policy that could cover this? Me, myself, I have a $1 million umbrella policy because it's just uh, wise. I've seen over the years that you never have enough uh, insurance. So uh, you, know, you have a certain amount of car insurance. Quite frankly, umbrella policy covers just about anything and uh, covers about anything. So, uh, but a lot of times uh, lawyers forget about that umbrella policy. So if you're working in an office, you know, that might be good to just be armed with that knowledge uh, so that you could uh, help your attorney to remember things like that, is to try to find all of the insurance that could play a part in settling this case. Uh, and so, you know, that's something uh, to consider right there as a discovery component. So these are things that I'd like to see from you. Uh, and I want you to work on and are very critical in your trial notebook. Don't forget about it. Now, I want to bring something else up real quick on this trial notebook, and that is, um, you know, I've told you, I want you to use uh, Dropbox for sure. Uh, there might be other products out there. That's fine. Uh, use your own, but this is free, okay? And this is a good way uh, to send me your trial notebook as an e-portfolio, okay? Uh, a trial notebook is just too big to send as an email, and I don't want you, I've already had a couple of you, try to send me your trial notebook uh, as, a, as an email. I do not want your trial notebook piecemeal, okay? So no email, okay? Big no, okay? Uh, we don't want you to just go send me a part of your trial notebook here and there and whatever, okay? What we do is you set up your Dropbox out here, which kind of looks like this. Okay? You get the idea. And this is floating around out there in space. You set that up. You have to put in an email address and a password. It's free. Uh, now it is limited, but it's plenty big enough for our trial notebook. So that's what we need is something more mid-size instead of just like an email attachment. Uh, you try to send too many, it'll just blow up your email, okay? Uh, and I don't want you to send them one by one. I want you to send them all at once to the Dropbox and then just label it as a trial notebook. And then um, first thing, of course, you want to put in there is a table of contents and then start slowly putting things into there. Now you can always alter that table of contents and try to make it fit with what you've got in there. Uh, you could go in and put it one by one. Uh, first thing you put in there, uh, maybe an uh, interview sheet. Uh, you know, then uh, um, you know, go, start down from there. Letter to the opposing attorney, uh, you know, complaint, you know, and these type things. So those are things that we want you to look at and get this started. Now, I want you to also send me your uh, password and your email address for your Dropbox so that I can snoop around in there, okay? Because I just want to look and see, you know, how you're doing. So I need uh, Dropbox email address password 
from everybody. Okay? Now, here's the deal. I got one right now. So I need more. Okay? So get busy on that. That'd be something good that you could do right now if you're a little bit confused about some of the other parts of it. You know, work on setting up your Dropbox. Uh, what people are asking me about right now is somewhere in the course that's it's a statewide can course. Somebody else set it up. They said get tabs, get a notebook. Well, I don't want you to do that. I want you to set up a Dropbox so you don't have the cost. You have no cost. You don't have to pay for another notebook. You don't have to pay for tabs. Just shoot that to me through your Dropbox. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope it's helpful. I'm going to put this out multiple ways, so hopefully everybody will get the point of what I'm driving at here, uh, and uh, we'll uh, share some more with you later. Thank you.